So the structure and format of activities in active learning it can be vary. It can be any format. It can be like individual exercise or small group exercise or a whole class exercise. It doesn't matter if you will choose only one like individual exercise or a whole class exercise. But the the heart of the active learning is you have opportunity or rooms for students to share, to share their ideas and to show or demonstrate what they're thinking or learning. And that let them use their own energy or imagination to complete their works or your tasks rather than simply listen to you, uh, listen to you and chart note or take notes. How well does the active learning work and why does it work? As I mentioned earlier that the student will learn and move their new information into long-term memory if they have opportunity to rehearse or practice many, many, many times. So as a video from eight minutes of Eric teaching, you can see that students have opportunity to think about the concept many, many times. At the beginning, think on their own and then share with their friend or their, their neighbor. And at the end, share with a class. So they, they can have at least three times to rehearse, rethink, and listen to others. So this new information will move to short-term or even long-term memory. So active learning reduces the cognitive load on working memory and making retention and storage into a new, the new information into the long-term memory easily. Learning requires attention to attentiveness. It is difficult for imp or impossible for a student to pay attention on anything for every long while they are passive. Usually, if um, some teacher likes to ask me how long student can pay attention to the teacher lecture. So let's say the age plus seven. So if the, your students are 15 years old, so they can pay attention on you, simply listen or short note, only 15 plus seven, so it's 23 minutes. Not more than half an hour, they will get lost or lost their focus, and they want to release their energy. So when you design your teaching or your instruction, please keep in mind that whether or not your lesson plan or your uh, teaching plan is active or let your student involve in their own learning. There are some behavior or some things that you need to keep in mind and avoid not to happen into your, in, in your classroom. What, should, what you should not do? Plant into active learning with no explanation. Even though you use active learning, you use the method or any activities that let your student use the energy and fun with the activities, but that's it. But it's no senses or no explanation at all. This is not good active learning. How to do it? So explain what you are going to do and why it is in the student's best interest. You need to explain or students need to, to share or explain why these activities make sense to them or what the concept or learning occur during, after doing these activities. So this will get them learn or clear about why you let them do it. The second thing that you should not do is, ex is to expect our students to eagerly get into group at the first time you ask them to, especially when you start to use active learning into your classroom. You don't have to expect that your student will 
act like the students in Mar Mar Eric Masua classroom because they, they never get into this kind of learning style before. So maybe they just sit still and still don't know what you try them to do. So how to do with this problem if, when you try to use active learning at the first time and your student don't pay attention or don't understand what you are trying them to do it. So you have to be patient enough to wait until and try again, try, try this method again and again and again. Don't give up because when you try it first or second time, your students still uh, use the, their own, their previous learning style. But if you frequently use it, they will learn, students will learn, oh, this is the way of your teaching style. And this is a task that they have to do. So they will change. They will finally change to, into the way that you want them to do. But the instructor need to be patient enough to wait for your student to change. And what the third one that you, you don't have to do or don't allow it to happen into your classroom is to make activity trivial. How to do it? Your activity have to make to active. It have to do hands-on thing, hands-on and minds-on. The activities that you select into your classroom, it need to challenge enough for your student, not easy or too difficult for them to, to do it. So you have to select the uh, good activity, good assignment or task for your student, to all of your students to, uh, to think or to finish or to complete the task. You don't have to make activities too long. You, it need to be short enough. It need to be like in the good time frame that student can do this task. Even though these activities or problem is very, very good, but it needs a long time to complete it. It's impossible to, to get it done by, you know, by the uh, one hour, lecture period this too long the active uh, activities or active class it needs to like take the focus of the student within five seconds to three minutes not over than this otherwise you won't have time to discuss or let them share their idea the important thing is not the activities or student think on activities only but you need to prepare or uh, provide enough time for them to share to you or to share to their peers or to share to the class. Uh, the thing that you have to avoid or concern is about calling for volunteer after every activity or make everything routine. Students can predict or guess what you are going to do next time. You have to change the activities or the way of teaching or teaching method frequently. So let your student engage or excited what you are going to do. Even though the first, the first class or the second class student may get excited with the game, but if you use this game on the third or forever, they get bored. So the teacher need to be uh, creative for lesson plan and select the activities, teaching methods, and you know any kind of assessment or task for the student to complete in the classroom. The common active learning concerns Many faculty members are re uh, reluctant to use active learning or afraid to use it or don't believe to use to don't believe that active learning can be used in Thai classroom. 
There are some common expressed concerns as following. For example, one instructor said, I will never be able to cover my syllabus if I have to spend all that time on activities. This teacher, this teacher believed that active learning or active activities or hands-on activities waste time. He or she believed that uh, learning occurs when the teacher or instructor provide the correct or knowledge or information for the student to memorize. But in reality, students learn best when they have appropriate time to investigate or feeling thing or experience thing on their own. So active learning is a way to give that opportunities for your student. One faculty member may concern that if I use active learning, I have to spend a lot of time designing activities. As I mentioned earlier that a good activities for active learning need to become like a short time, like not over three minutes. It's about five seconds to three minutes. So it, you don't need to spend a lot of time for activities. Or some instructor believe that the noise level will get out of hand and I will waste a lot of time getting students' attention back. The, if the noise occur in the classroom is about their excitement or about their thinking or about the discussion about the activities that you throw to them, in my point of view, I think it's fine. And it's very good environment if that noise is is uh, within the learning atmosphere. And you know, is this the nature of people or the nature of human that they want to know the answer, whether or not the way they think is right or wrong. So if you engage them or encourage them into a curiosity or thinking about the activities, finally they will want to know the answer. So it's easy to get back that attention if you just say, okay, let's see what we, are, what we learn from this or what is the answer from this, their attention will be back very quickly. Some instructors believe that some students will refuse to get into groups. Yes and maybe no, because the learning style of the people, yes, some people are like to learn on their own. But you know, like I mentioned two tapes earlier, that learning style can be changed. So if you put them into the atmosphere and explicitly let them feel that they can learn even by their own and also from their peers as well. So some student, the older student, those type of student can change the way of their learning to more social constructivism too. And finally, some faculty members believe that students will complain if I'm not doing my job and my student reading will, uh, will permit. Yes, maybe student, if the student not uh, don't get used to with the active learning, they may have some orientation about teaching is a job of the teacher to tell knowledge and the, their role as a student is to listen and chart note. But if you make it explicitly that teaching is the way to facilitate you learn and the learner's role is to conduct your own learning and the active learning can help students to learn with fun. I think finally the student will get some sense that they learn something by doing fun from the activities. They can learn something from their peers, not only from the textbook and from the instructor as well. So how about try the active learning in your lecture class or in your classroom in the appropriate time, not just one time, second time, but how about one semester? 
and then let's see how is your student uh, improving in uh, teaching and learning how they like it in the way that you change the, the teaching the teaching method that you change the student behavior student uh, attention student sparking eye will tell you whether or not this uh, approach works or doesn't work okay this is all about active learning i hope you get some information and some ideas about how to use this approach and i would like to encourage you to try to use active learning into your classroom see you next section